What's up, y'all? And welcome back to Dad Needs to Talk. I'm your host, Robert, and today, today we're going to be talking about my gaming foundation, One Piece bounties, and some wholesome moments in some anime. So let's get to it. So, this... I don't know. Things feel strange. Times feel strange. Um, don't really know how, how to describe it. Um, you know, just a lot of just moving parts going on in, in the world, in my life. And so just trying to do my best to, uh, to make sense of it all. <laughs> um, but before we get to that, as always, if this is your first time here, then welcome. But... If you're a returning listener or watcher, then welcome back. You know, here at Dad Needs to Talk, it's all about fatherhood and family, manga, anime, and sometimes video games. Um, especially today, a lot of video games. Because, like I said, one thing, or, or kind of like the big thing I want to talk about today is my gaming foundation and what I mean by that is a lot of the like key video games that I played and experienced over my life that kind of helped shaped uh, me and my gaming taste that I have today so that has been a topic I've you know I've you know y'all know I've mentioned before that you know I have wanted to do more gaming stuff especially recently you know it's like i've been doing my best to to try to get back into playing some games which i actually have some new games to talk about today um that i actually got to play in the last week and yeah so you know it, it was just uh I, it, it was a mix between like me listening to a gaming podcast and just me just kind of just getting in this mood so i was like you know what screw it i'm just gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna do this because like i said something i've been wanting to do for a while um, but of course, there will still be plenty of, uh, you know, manga and anime talk and stuff, but maybe a little bit more compact today. Um, but before I dive into all that, a um, little bit of housekeeping. First of all, shout out to a um, friend of the podcast who was a guest on last episode, um, Shakita from Wild, Weird, and Witchy Podcast. Um, it was super awesome to finally get to have you on the show and to finally get to uh collab with you so i'm glad you had a fun time um some of the people who listened had a fun time as well so we definitely have to do that again um aside from that also um i'm trying to think uh sorry i'm trying to gather my thoughts um of course like any reviews and stuff that i've put up recently um like the uh, koshi no ko um and some other ones um make sure to go check those out as well and then as always be on the lookout for stuff on the horizon um because i have uh i have some more cool people uh that i'm excited to have on in the coming weeks as well and i'm also going to be hopefully fingers crossed be a be a guest on some other uh podcast and things as well um in the coming month of September. So I'm very excited for all those things coming. Um, but with that said, um, I'm not planning on it, but I feel it coming. Um, there's a chance that sometime it, it, it might even be just a one week thing. Um, I don't, I don't know if I would do another full month away or whatever, who knows? Um, cause like I said, it just, a lot of stuff just going on, like some like trying to f- work through and figure out, you know, some stuff for work. Um, of course, you know, changes with the kids and you know everything going on with the school and stuff in that nature. Um, you know that I kind of um, might need to put some more uh, time and focus into. So, but like I said, we'll just kind of play play things by ear and see how things go because. Um, you know, because cause one thing I kind of was thinking about was it feels like every time I try to try to bring, quote unquote, more structure to my show, um, the I, I don't know if I want to say the less natural it feels. It just 
feels like life just keeps happening and then I have to scrap whatever plans I was going to do because case in point this is the last podcast episode for the month which should be a series review not going to happen so I think I for now I'm just going to just stick to doing whatever I want to do as I want to do it um, and hey if things happen to be orderly and and a certain theme going on cool if not it is what it is because because i feel like for me my my structure is no structure <laughs> if if that makes sense you know because because i because I, I really do enjoy the kind of uh I don't know if I want to say the chaos, <laughs> but a little bit of just the kind of uh, flying by the seat of my pants, so to speak, you know, um, and like I said, that's not to say, of course, I do enjoy doing, you know, uh, planned out stuff, whatever, but I feel like when I try to have it too planned and boxed in or whatever, then things just fall apart or I start to kind of feel um, ob obligated to do certain things. And so... Um, so I want to kind of continue to give myself that freedom to just do stuff as, as I see fit. Um, cause you know, I was, I was going to try to do like, Oh, for, for the month of September, I'll try to do, you know, a lot of romance stuff. Cause I wanted to have the big thing for the end of September to be, uh, me reading all of sweat and soap. Hey, maybe that'll still happen. Maybe not. Uh, cause I picked up some new manga today and I'm like, maybe I might read some of those first. <laughs> um, but, um, but like I said, it, it, it is what it is. But, um, but you know, but in general, your boy's been doing pretty good. Um, like I said, just like my my perception of time and what all, how much time has happened since the last podcast recording is weird because especially like this month, like the episode that went up last week, I recorded the week before. And then the episode that went up the week of the 17th, I recorded that like two weeks prior to that so it's just like sometimes like okay it's like okay <laughs> what is current stuff for me to talk about or to cover and stuff whatever um but we'll we'll figure it out and stuff whatever as as we always do um but like i said i hope y'all are excited to hear um my gaming talk um as always uh there will be uh time stamps down in the down in the description box below so hey if, you, if you're excited about the gaming talk and you want to just jump straight to that stuff cool or you know if i talk about certain spoiler for a manga or anime or tv show or whatever you can skip ahead pass all this stuff whatever so but yeah just check the the description box for timestamps and all that fun stuff so um so yeah so like i said i think that's it as far as like housekeeping and just like general life update um you know just as always shout out to everybody out there in the community that is uh doing their thing handling their business um much love to each and every one of y'all um and yeah let, let's 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 uh let's wrap up august with the bang and let's get ready to uh kick off september um which is about it's about to be a uh for me a three-day holiday weekend which i am happy about because your boy needs some rest i just want to just dive into some games and and some other stuff too um now let's see where where do i want to start today um so you, you know what you know what i'm gonna talk about real quick um a few manga i picked up earlier today because um because I, I was i was like you know what i want to get out the house and yeah i know i've talked about it before about like how i've been getting these barnes and nobles gift cards from work well <laughs> i had enough points again so I got another fifty dollar gift card. So I was like, you know what? This end of the month and and this week in particular, some things that I was excited for came out, as well as some uh, some things I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a try to. So uh, let me see. Sorry, I'm looking at my shelf to see. Okay, I think I think I talked about the rest of that stuff. So so let me start off with. One one of, or hold on, <laughs> sorry, I have receipts falling out, books, whatever. But uh, but the continuation 
of one of my most watched um, reviews on my channel, I finally picked up From the Red Fog Volume 2. Um, and so it's kind of wild now. Of course, y'all remember if y'all heard, if y'all listened to my review for the Volume 1, y'all know how much I enjoyed it. Um, and just as a reminder for those who do, who might not know, whatever, this is kind of set in a uh, in London. Um, what's the what's the time frame? I don't. I can't remember what time frame it is, but but it's in London. And sorry, I'm trying to see if I can find. Sorry, I usually thought thought I had volume one somewhere within reach. Let let me check. Okay, I found it. It was on my shelf right next to Die Dark. Um, but yeah, so this, remember this, this was volume one of uh, From the Red Fog. And uh, it's set in uh, 19th century um, England. But yeah, so, um, and it's about a young boy who, his mother was a murderer. And so he got raised in that environment. And one day something happens to his mother and he ends up, basically loose into the world and he ends up going on uh, killing sprees and stuff whatever himself and he's finding like-minded people um and they're forming this group or whatever so um but it, it was really good i really enjoyed it but yeah uh, volume two came out maybe like a month a couple months ago or whatever and i kind of been trying to wait but i was like you know what i can't wait any longer so i finally picked up volume two excited to uh to read it um and of course as we're getting ready to head into fall i feel like this you know a perfect time for it um next up a long awaited one for me because i enjoyed volume one so much lost lad london volume two now those of y'all that might remember and i actually do have volume one right here um on hand this was the one that uh which funny and funny enough, I believe this is also this also takes also takes place in London, <laughs> uh, but it's about this uh, this college student working with this detective um, to figure out how they are tied into um, or how they get roped into the murder of the city's mayor. So I really enjoyed Volume One, and so Volume Two just came out. So um, today, so I'm very excited to dive into this one. And see where where the story goes for that. Another favorite of mine. I got Blue Period Volume Eight, which I've been trying to hold back. I, I still haven't read Volume Seven because you know this is the start of the university arc that takes place after um, where season one of the anime ended. So you know Yatora is now going off to uh, to college. And stuff, whatever. And so I'm, I'm trying to let them build up, but I might have to go ahead and read seven and eight now that I got two of them because, um, because they've, in, they've, they're increasing the volume release to where we're getting now at least one volume a month. So I was like, man, that'd be nice if, like, if I, if I can hold out and then have like four or five volumes to read for like, you know, during the winter break, or whatever. So, but we'll, we'll see. Um, you'll know if, if I've dived in because I'll probably do a video or something on it. <laughs> and lastly, the last thing I picked up today. Now, this was a surprise pickup for me. It is called Momo the Blood Taker. Now, the synopsis of this is Tokyo is plagued with a string of murders where the victims are drained of blood while the city whispers of vampires. Detective... Mikogami Keiko seeks to avenge his murdered lover as he stalks the man with two faces uh, Mikogami catches the attention of a mysterious silver haired girl so this cover looks very nice and that is what got my attention uh, that plus plus just, just the way the the name and stuff was I was like I saw I was like Momo and then I, you know, picked it up and I looked at the cover and I was like, okay, that has my attention. Um, kind of, kind of reminds me, honestly, kind of gives me the same vibe of, uh, of what drew me in for, from the red fog was seeing the cover and how the lettering and stuff was on that. So, um, so yeah, so like I said, this was 
I remember seeing uh, Seven Seas post about this when they announced that they had the license and stuff for it. Um, and it seems to be a lot of uh, excitement in the community for it. So who knows? Um, but um, I'm excited to dive in. And it's kind of, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that this was a uh, unintended theme of uh, of everything I picked up today, except for Blue Period, all surround uh, murderers and violence. <laughs> so may, maybe I'm getting ready for a uh, for a for violent season. So, but, um, but yeah. So th those are just some things I picked up this week. And like I said, you know, some of them, y'all probably will see some uh, thoughts and stuff on them in the coming weeks ahead. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and, and, and I was so tempted, I almost, but, I, but I'm holding that cause I was like, I want to have more money so I can buy more volumes, but I was looking at both, uh, uh, shoot, what is it called? Uh, Witch and the Beast. Shoot, what is that called? Hold on. Yeah, I, I was looking at the, uh, the Witch and the Beast because, um, they recently announced that it's getting an anime adaptation and so I, I flipped through volume one and I heard from some of my friends that the art in it was beautiful because I was looking at some panels where people were posting the comments when they announced the the uh, the anime was coming and like one of the first few pages there was like a giant whale or shark thing like going through like a skyscraper or something crazy or whatever and the art looked crazy and I was like crazy in a good way like beautiful and I was like I might need to pick this up but I'm like no Robert I'm gonna hold off and wait on or whatever and same thing with uh with uh um Ragna Crimson I almost bought picked that up too but I'm like no I'm gonna try to try to hold strong <laughs> and uh and pick those up later but um but I'm excited because like I said both of them have anime coming um in the in the coming year and stuff so that that is very exciting um and speaking of anime i'm trying to remember it was something else that had got um oh undead unluck we officially got the uh the announcement of that anime coming so undead unluck officially confirmed and and the beautiful thing is that it is going to be oh, let me see if I can pull this up it is going to be produced by David Productions now if you do not know David Productions studio they are the studio that does Fire Force and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and so Undead Unluck shout out to the homie Steve from It Mob but Undead Unluck is going to be in good hands and it's going to look fantastic with uh, with that studio um, behind it. Um, and speaking of which, um, just a little PSA uh, for those of y'all who are also going through the pain of uh, of uh, <laughs> of uh, Made in the Abyss Season 2, um, the final episode of this season is going to be an hour long. So, an hour of pain... Yay? Question mark. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so yeah, so that's coming. Um, I'm trying to see was there any other. Um, uh, yeah, no, nothing else notable. Anime announcements recently that that I'm like really looking at that's worth me mentioning. Um, like I said, I'll just talk about them as as um as they come out and and come to it. Um. But uh, but yeah, so lot lots of good stuff on the horizon for that, um, and like I said, I, I picked up some very dope manga that I, that I'm excited to to dive into, and yeah, so let's see, um, oh, Heavenly Delusion, um, is also, which I don't think. Who knows where my copy of Heavenly Delusion is, but um, but that one is also getting an anime. Um, sorry, I'm trying to. I was looking to see if it was maybe behind me, but who knows? It is somewhere. But yeah, but yeah, Heavenly Delusion, um, is also getting an anime, as well, which I'm excited about because 
I enjoyed that first volume. And so seeing that it is getting a anime is just very dope news. So uh, let me see. But yeah, so like I said, I, I, I enjoyed volume one and I'm just excited to see more of more of that story, more of that world. So, uh, yeah. So let me see what else we got to talk about before, like, before we start diving into some of these um, bigger things. Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and real quick, a uh, little, little, little inside joke uh, for, 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 for you who, who is listening. Uh, sh- shout out to you, James. Um, I'm, I'm recording the podcast right now as I just sent you that last message. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats on the house, homie. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, th- I think that's it as far as that stuff. Um, now, there there was some news with uh, Gamescom that happened, the, the big gaming convention in Germany. Let me see. Let's see, let's see, let's see if, if there's anything noteworthy for me to uh, to talk about right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, <laughs> you know what? I'll show this. Uh, actually, oh, let me make sure this looks right. You know what? You know what? I won't show it on my screen, but I'll just run through some of these uh, Gamescom announcements real quick. Uh, so, after eight years... <laughs> Dead Island 2 is officially coming out um, in fe- February 3rd, 2023. Dead Island 2 was first teased, I think it was like back in 2014. Um, and a lot, of people, a lot of people just thought that it just got canceled because, you know, because Dead Island 2, the people who made the original Dead Island game eventually went on to make the Dying Light series. And so Dead Island 2 has kind of been transferred to different studios and stuff over the years. And so, but it seems like it's finally coming out next year. Uh, let's see. Eh, Sonic, Trey, Sonic game, Gotham Nice. Don't care, don't care. Um, eh. Uh, PlayStation finally announced their own version of because because y'all know how the uh how the xbox has the uh has the uh what's it called the uh elite controller so playstation finally is coming out with their own version of their own elite controller um it's called the uh the dual sense edge um which i think that's a pretty dope name you know for a uh for a controller um but your boy probably ain't gonna be getting one no time soon just because i don't really you know (laughs) i enjoy gaming but you know i don't really be playing that heavy but um but i will say it it, it looks really nice though um so but um but it's gonna have you know of course like all the customizable all the customizable buttons and back paddles and all that fancy all the fancy doodads um, but who who knows? You know what? Maybe may, maybe if your boy becomes rich someday, it might just be a uh, you know just a special treat to myself um, that I would do my best to not let Vash destroy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so the Dual Sense Edge, like I said, that's just a very dope name. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing too many other things. Oh, so there's this game called sorry let me pull it up it is called um lies of p and basically it is like it is like uh like a bloodborne dark souls type of game uh but the character that you're playing as is basically pinocchio um, and so I heard somebody on, on a podcast or something kind of, uh, equated to like a, uh, to, uh, to like a, uh, um, 
Alice in Wonderland, like the like the uh, like the McGee's Alice games, but mixed with kind of like like the kind of like a uh, kind of gothic um, type of setting that that you get in like Bloodborne and stuff. So, but but it, it looks dope. And like I said, I think just the concept of like, hey, you're playing this freaking Pinocchio with like you know like your uh, like a uh, your prosthetic arm or whatever. You can kind of like switch out for like different weapons and stuff. But uh, but yeah, it, it it looks really dope. So that that was like a nice little surprise um, that you know I wouldn't mind you know checking out more of. Uh, let me see. Oh, the the new Tales from the Borderlands, Tales from the Border, Borderlands Two is coming out at the uh, in October. So I'm excited for that one personally because I enjoy that first one. Um. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, um, Return to Monkey Island. I never really played any of the old Monkey Island adventure games, but hey, if you into it, there's a new one coming out in September. Um, they shut off that new uh, AEW fighting game, which, you know, I, I haven't really been a fan of wrestling um, for a long time, but I always hear... Um, positive talks about um you know especially about AEW and stuff uh, let me see what it's called AEW fight yeah AEW fight forever um and so yeah so yeah so we'll we'll see how how that kind of turns out but um let me see, just scroll through, just seeing if there are any other last little things that are worth me mentioning from this event. I'm not really seeing anything else. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just scrolling through. Uh, one, one thing I will mention uh, is that more than likely in September, we will probably get another Nintendo Direct because there's usually a big one in September every year. And same thing for a PlayStation Showcase. So hopefully we might get some more um, gaming news and announcements in the coming weeks. Um, you know, especially because more than likely, because especially because PlayStation is getting getting ready to re-release the uh, the uh, Last of Us Part One remake is coming out actually this Friday, September second, um, or September first, whichever day is coming out or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I, th I think that's pretty much it as far as like the Gamescom news and stuff that I want to talk about. Um, but yeah, like I said, some some pretty fun and dope uh, things. But I think I'm ready to kind of dive in really quickly into a little bit of anime and TV show stuff. And then like I said, I'm not going to be too long on this stuff because I really want to dive into uh to the gaming talk but uh one kind of like reoccurring theme which i really enjoyed um um and it happened in both uh parallel world pharmacy and yakuza's got to babysitting because i just finished catching up on yakuza's got to babysitting before i recorded now starting with parallel world pharmacy um and this is the most recent episode so i think is episode eight uh I just really enjoyed once again just seeing Pharma and the guy that he talked to from the other guild, um, the one dad. It, it was just so sweet, and 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 I and you know just seeing his struggle, his internal struggle of you know he's a doctor himself or a pharmacist I should say, but he can't figure out nothing to do. For his daughter's sickness, the other doctors in his guild, he tried to go to that was nearby. Their 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 shop was closed, so he was freaking. He's like, man, what do I do? And he remembers that they just had a meeting with his guild where they were like, hey, um, stay away from Parallel World Pharmacy or whatever, because you know they're not associated with us. You know, da 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 da. But he basically just reached a breaking point. Where he was like, no, the 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 importance of my child's well-being comes above everything else. And so Pharma happened to be passing by and was like, hey, something wrong with your kid? And 
you know, and, and once again, I got to give a shout out to the homies, Polo and Tail, at a mic check, because Polo was the one who originally, you know, uh, checked out Parallel World Pharmacy and mentioned it, and I watched it and enjoyed it, and I passed it on to Three Weeks Podcast and other people in the community, and they've been enjoying it and stuff, whatever, so, but, because um, I was listening to Polo, them talking about it earlier today, but, um, but yeah, but just, just seeing... Or, or seeing the gears start to turn in the dad's brain because, you know, he had these preconceived um, thoughts, you know, of pharma and who he is um, and what type of business he runs and stuff. <clears throat> you know, and just having him having these, uh, you know, preconceived thoughts of pharma and stuff, whatever. But as he watched how detailed pharma was with everything he did in the care for his daughter it truly made him see like no this guy the reason why his business is booming is because he cares and because he has the knowledge and he actually you know basically he tailors the experience to everybody that comes into his pharmacy um, unlike a lot of people in, in the current guild and stuff, whatever, which of course some of it is just because the lack of knowledge that they have in this time period or whatever. But he was talking about how, you know, when pharma was getting the weight of the daughter so that he can give her the proper dosage of medicine. And the other guy was like, wow, <laughs> we usually just, you know, whatever we give the, the adults, we just, you know, just give the child half of that or whatever versus like the exact what they need for their body. And so just, just all these small details or whatever. And then Pharma healed up his daughter. And then, you know, he eventually went back to his girl and he was like, yo, <laughs> we need to change. You know, we need to be learning from, uh, from this pharmacy, not trying to tear it down and you know of course he got backlash and you know his pharmacy ended up getting destroyed and he got kicked out of the guild but you know farm a farmer came through and and showed love to him or whatever and was like hey you don't have to leave and go to another country to start practicing medicine again or whatever um why don't you join my why did, why don't you join me cuz i'm about to start up a guild and just seeing you know that transition that that encouragement um you know from from pharma and then what the the encouragement he also got from uh from his daughter because i love the part you know where where they were setting up the shop um or getting ready to open make their debut open of course of course as you would expect you know he had anxiety and nervousness but his daughter tugged on him on his uh you know, uh, side his shoulder whatever, and was like, hey, dada, you can do it. And it just immediately just hit my heart, you know, just because, you know, I've talked about before about, you know, sometimes, you know, kids will just give you those words of encouragement when you least expect it, like I said, especially coming from a child. Because uh, like I said, it's been plenty of times where I've done the most basic of things, even you know, but I'm having a tough day. But I've done like the most basic things, and my son Vash, he'd be like, "Good job, Dad, Dad," and give me a thumbs up, and I'm just like, "Oh, my son!" And so seeing her show that support, and then him opening up the doors, and being greeted with so many people, and I love the freaking name of the pharmacy, and just when he was like, "Welcome to Dawn Pharmacy." And it, it was just just such a sweet moment um, that, that I just truly loved and enjoyed. Um, and I'm just excited to see like where things go from here um, with this show. And continuing from that on the uh, Wholesome Dads, um, Yakuza's got the babysitting. So I watched the two most recent episodes. And so the previous one, once again, it's just, it's just always, you know, just always cool just seeing these people from uh, from uh, Kirishima's that knew him from years past or whatever, finding out like, oh, hey, he's taking care of a little girl now. Like, you know, and they're like, BS, he is not. 
and them thinking he's gonna assault and he's having to pick people in their place. But um but that that episode was good, but the most recent episode, uh, and uh, I believe uh, his name was uh, Aoi, A-R-I, Aoi. Um, seeing that whole backstory of why he ended up leaving the Yakuza family and things like that, and, you know, and basically his own path to fatherhood to where, and to see, like, like, it was also interesting to get to see like all the different ages of everybody as well because because Aoi he was 27 at that point and you know uh, Kirishima was 20 the boss was 37 the boss's wife was 27 so all these different ages and stuff whatever so now it's been eight years so the the head boss he's in his 40s um Aoi is in his late 30s and now Kirishima is you know in 28 late 20s or whatever but just seeing that uh the owie was um the previous kind of like right hand man of the boss before kirishima took on that role but that a lot of these changes happen right around the time when um the little lady was born and seeing what owie was or basically him seeing the bond that the boss had with his wife and then eventually once uh once the daughter was born um and him finding uh bond and his girlfriend and now his wife and because he grew up as an orphan so he didn't really have that real uh, you know semblance of family but that's what the yakuza family brought to him was like all these people became his family and stuff but the lifestyle um, was too much for his wife because um, it was one time where he came to see her in the hospital and she I think I think when she, I think she was pregnant and he was covered in blood and she like passed out or whatever and so it was just always tough on her every time he came around he was just covered in blood and you know whatever and so he went and talked to the boss and he was like hey basically end up leaving the family and the boss told me like hey I understand you know you have something more important that you need to protect you know than than us you know you have your own family and just seeing that mutual understanding and respect um and how now I always talking about how now he has two kids you know has his older son who's his mini me and they also have a daughter who looks like the wife and so it, it was just just really sweet just really wholesome um and then also seeing through both of these episodes on um, little lady starting to make her more friends and stuff whatever um both at school as well as with other kids that come around the yakuza family and stuff whatever so but um but yeah it, it was just just really sweet just seeing you know him just coming to that realization of like hey i finally have something more important that i need to um protect and that i cherish and so he ended up leaving that life behind um to you know take care of his own family and to start his own family so so yeah so both of those episodes were uh, were very good and um a lot of anime in general this week was just very good um, i'm not going to go into all of them but just uh man in the best was another wild episode <laughs> um same thing same thing with summertime render and both of those whew, wild episodes um but um um, Aoashi, another really great episode. Uh, what, what else? Um, ooh, <laughs> that most recent episode of Classroom of the Elite from this week. Uh, seeing uh, what's her name, uh, Kushida, get her, uh, kind of get her uh, come up a bit this week was a, uh, was was a joy to watch, <laughs> if I do say so myself. But um, but so that that was very fun. Um, last last show I kind of want to give a shout out to was uh, I finally finished watching um, The Sandman um, on Netflix and so that was a very interesting show and one of my favorite episodes or a couple of my favorite episodes um, um, one in particular it was episode 6 where we got to meet Death um, and Death Death was very beautiful <laughs> Uh, shout out to I don't know the actress's name I need to look it up but um, but seeing um, 
Dream and her um, and slight spoilers for this episode but just seeing before they revealed who she was them just kind of just walk around and talking and then her kind of talking like in like cryptic ways to certain people to where it was like the, this this one young guy who was trying to hit on her um it was you know and he was kind of like hey you know can i see you again she she and she of course of course but because them being like guys and deities they know all the humans names and different stuff whatever but the way she was like she's like, of course i know you um and of course you know like she, and the way she was saying like yeah oh yeah yeah we'll i'll be seeing you again soon and so i was like huh that's weird but then as the episode went on and you start to, to realize that she is dead and she's visiting these different people and then sending them on their way to the afterlife um really hit um like i said especially because she was taking people of all age ranges like this very old man who was just you know chilling to freaking newborn baby and you know um young adults somebody who just got married just all these different lot lots of heartbreaking moments in there um but another wild part in that episode that was just fascinating to watch was um they had went to it was some time period it was like I think I think it might have been like sixteen eighty nine or something like that or whatever. And they were at this like tavern and you know, this one guy was talking about how how um how you don't really have to die, people don't have to die, people just die because it's the trendy thing to do basically is what he was saying. And so 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 Dream and Death end up talking and they're like, Okay. Let, let basically use him as an experiment to where they took away death from him so he became immortal and so dream made a deal with him he's like hey in a hundred years meet me back here at this tavern and we'll talk because basically dream wants to find out why he wants to continue to live and so every hundred years they met up at this tavern and talked and dream would ask him like hey so what have you done with these last hundred years of your life what have you seen what have you experienced and then he tells him and then he's like okay do you still want to live and through it all through the guy having lots of highs super highs like becoming super wealthy and famous to the lows of the lows him losing family and children and stuff um and then basically being homeless to kind of coming back up and it, it was just fascinating to watch those so all of that being in one episode uh, was just very, very, very interesting. Um, but the, the show as a whole is definitely one I would recommend. Um, also, episode nine with the serial convention, and by serial, I mean serial killers <laughs> convention. That was a very wild but good episode um, to, to watch as well. Um, and I think that's it as far as like TV shows I want to talk about. Um, um, I do want to give a quick shout out to uh, to the homie manga alerts um, for tweeting this out, and of course it's been confirmed. But um, but Netflix is going to be re adding or a mix of adding back some anime, but getting some more um, in the coming weeks or months. Um, they're going to be getting a uh, Claymore. Uh, I'm going to just point out some of some like the big ones: uh, Claymore, Berserk, 1997. Parasite the Maxim, Nana, Hajime Ipo, and the one I'm most excited for is Monster. Um, so, Urakawa, the same author as 20th Century Boys, the psychological thriller Monster is finally going to be making its way to Netflix in the coming um, weeks. So, very excited. For more people to have uh, access to, to uh, to watching that, so yeah, so let's just dive in really quickly to a um, little bit of manga, and then we're gonna really dive into the gaming talk. So, um, just just speaking super briefly, no spoilers, or whatever, but um, on most of this stuff, but um, but I went through, I caught up on. Jujutsu Kaisen, that was like a 10, 15 chapter binge read. 
very good very glad to be caught up um glad to see maki is back in the story so that was super dope uh, <laughs> people in the tizzy about my hero academia again but i'm not going to touch on that too much this week um i caught up on mashal i think did i catch him on mashal hmm no i think i started catching up on mashal but i need to finish i think um i can't remember but um uh, what else uh, Undead Unluck, caught back up on that, and it looks like we're about to finally get ready to do, to enter into the, uh, to the loop, if you know, you know, um, caught up on, uh, Akane Banachi, uh, Banashi, um, that was very dope, I, I was like a handful of chapters behind, but I picked the perfect time to catch back up, um, cause first of all, they, they had like this very beautiful, um, um, color spread, um, recently, and yeah look at that um very very beautiful color spread but uh, but um it was just very awesome and finally we got the confrontation of of akane finally having to cut the conversation with uh master isho about why he banished her father from um you know from uh, the rakugo um thing so uh so that was very dope and I think that's it as far as like 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 quick things I caught up on. Now, big thing, and I'm gonna try to keep this brief, whatever. But <sighs> gotta talk about One Piece manga chapter uh, 1058. So of course, if you don't want to hear One Piece spoilers, skip ahead to the timestamp. I'll be talking about the gaming stuff after this. But I gotta talk about this. So One Piece 1058 titled New Emperors. We finally got the long-awaited post Wano arc bounties for everybody. So it was just very dope to finally, for, first of all, just seeing like like all these new titles and the way, um, the way everybody's been addressing stuff, whatever. Because like now, with the title card for Luffy, it now says you know Emperor of the Sea, Monkey D. Luffy. Um, and like the newspaper saying, you know, Emperor of the Sea, Straw Hat Luffy, leader of the 5,600-man Straw Hat Grand Fleet, and his nine senior officers are wanted for the following bounties. And I love how they always do, like from, you know, from the smallest to the biggest. And so, of course, you know, Chopper, he still has a gag bounty, but at least he finally crossed up to 1,000 berries. Um... Nami, uh, pretty much Nami, Nami, uh, Brooke, Nami, Brooke, uh, Frankie, and Usopp all got a 300 million berry increase. So now, uh, Navigator Nami, it has a 366 million. Musician Brooke, Musician Soul King Brooke, 383 million shipwright cyborg frankie 394 million sniper god usopp 500 million and the archaeologist demon child nico robin with a 930 million berry bounty long awaited for one of Barely a couple of people in the whole world who can read Pronoglyphs. One of the last survivors of O'Hara. It's like her bounty was always like weirdly low, but now it's like, okay. <laughs> Let's give her a bounty to what she what she uh she deserves or whatever. So now she's sitting right under a billion. Um and then uh then we have the funny one where Sanji um now has the fourth highest in the crew with uh with one point uh zero three two billion uh Jimbe Hel Helmsman Jimbe with one point one billion and Swordsman Zoro with one point one hundred eleven billion <laughs> uh, or one billion one hundred eleven million I should say. Um so yeah so that was very dope. Um and of course you know Luffy with the three billion berry bounty now, from there, 
we finally got to see the freaking backstory behind how this whole freaking cross gill situation happened with crocodile and mihawk and buggy and we see as expected it was a big goof to where mihawk or or crocodile reached out to mihawk about them forming an alliance and they unintentionally came and ended up saving buggy from the navy's attack um because because a uh, crocodile was going to collect money from buggy but everybody took that as oh crocodile um is one of buggy's underlings coming to his aid to assist him <laughs> and one of buggy's big supporters made the poster the way it was which is why buggy is front and center um but you know mihawk is like hey i have no interest in being a and being a uh a uh, emperor of the sea let him take all the attention and all the heat um and hey if he screws up we can just kill him uh but uh but we all we learned that mihawk also used to have the epithet uh navy hunter so he used to like hunt down navy admiral or navy people and stuff for the back in the day um but so we got to, we got the bounties of a uh, crocodile is 1.9 billion mihawk is what is it um bum, 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 bum. hold on i'm looking right at it uh 359 three three okay three billion five hundred ninety million and then buggy with a 3.1 billion um which is funny, Buggy has a higher bounty than <laughs> bounty than Luffy. Uh, but anywho, um, so 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 that, that's how all that goofy situation happened. Um, and then lastly, we end off with some Revolutionary Army stuff with seeing that all the commanding officers of the Revolutionary Army seems to be fine. Um, we see the Dragon s- says that. Like, even if Sabo is fine, if he finds out that Sabo actually did kill Cobra for whatever reason, we're going to have a problem. And so, Dragon is talking to Kuma, and this is like a very beautiful um, panel with Dragon talking to Kuma with Koala there. And then we end the chapter with uh, Sabo calling in with the Dindamusha ringing, and it's Sabo saying, it's me. And so... Unfortunately, we're on freaking break next week, but I am excited to see where things go from here just because, you know, we hear a lot of people talk about this, and uh, I know Towns, he was talking about it on his stream and stuff, but um, um, for the first time in a long time, we finally are in, like, some uncharted territory with where we are going in the series because, you know, for the longest time, it was like, hey, all eyes are on Wano. All eyes are on taking down Kaido. And so that's been the path since the time skip and uh, and them going to Punk Hazard and meeting Law. And it was like, okay, you know, work with Law. They went to Dress Rose to take out um, Doflamingo. Then went to Zoe. Then Whole Cake Island with Big Mom. And then to Wano. And now here we are. Finally, all that stuff is majority behind us. Now we're in new territory, so I'm excited to just, just for the unknown. And so, yeah, so that that's kind of it with that stuff. Um, so I'm going to take one quick last little break and then I'll be right back. All right, so we're back. And but before we dive into... The gaming stuff or whatever i just want to just give a little bit of a encouragement to those out there to shoot for the stars and to not be afraid to put yourself out there um because and now i can't really fully go into detail on um, what i'm talking about um because for one it had everything hasn't fully happened yet but things are in motion but i'll just say that you know what's going through some stuff whatever and 
looking at what my options were and so one option was basically just being upfront and honest and being like hey this is a need I have um, cuz hey I got a family I'm trying to make some stuff work whatever and I had fear of you know of rejection or of just being told no and so I, I, I had to kind of just come to terms with that maybe being a possibility before I asked but instead I was I was greeted with mutual respect and mutual understanding um, of 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 the situation and of why I was asking for things um and so you know regardless of if if things end up fully working out as I hope they will um I will say that I am at least proud of myself for for taking that leap um of faith and just you know just hoping and just being like hey <laughs> the the worst thing that's gonna happen is you know, is that, you know, things don't work out or somebody says no in the end. And then, you know, I have to move on to other options versus, you know, I'd rather that versus me assuming they were going to say no. And then, you know, I go and do something else. And then they're like, hey, what happened? And I'm like, oh, well, this was my, this was, was what my, what was my situation? They'd be like, well, if you would have said something, we would have had you. So, you know, but but I, I just wanted just to toss that in real quick. Um, you know, and, and, and much love to everybody out there who is, uh, you know, whether you're going back to school yourself or you got kids starting school, college, you starting school, college, whatever the case may be, um, or you're in the middle of, you know, a new life transition, um, much love to you because um, I know it is some crazy times because I'm, I'm going through some, a mix of it myself, you know, because, um, you know, the, the last couple of days this week, um, don't know, Bash has been having some random tantrums in the morning. And so he literally had to get like drug into the school practically um, just because I don't know. He just been throwing some fits or whatever, which is weird because it's like we're on week three of school now. And like the first two weeks has been majority good. But now, you know, he's having some fits or whatever. So we're kind of having to work through and figure out, you know, what what is going on with him and stuff, whatever. So, but, you know, it's all part of life, all part of, you know, parenting and trying to make these adjustments and trying to figure out, you know, how to best work with your child and communicate and things of that nature. So, but yeah, but much love to everybody out there. Like I said, whether, you know, this is your first time sending your kid off to school or you this is you sending your eighth kid off to school <laughs> or whatever the case, whatever you got going on. Um, just, just much love to you. Like I said, much love to um, everybody as we all try to move forward and, and head towards um, bigger and better goals um, in life. So, <sighs> So yeah, so sorry for for the, for the random uh, tangents, but I had to had to you know had to get that off my mind. But I want to t start off real quick by shouting out a couple of games I've actually been playing. First of which is a little game that some of y'all might know called Stray. Now this is the the uh, game where basically you basically you play as a cat. In kind of like a post-apocalyptic world that is just majority filled with just robots <laughs> and so yeah you just play through this uh, through this game as this cat as you just you know basically kind of like solving puzzles and basically basically trying to make your way back into the outside world and so it's been interesting it's been it's been a it's been a nice kind of calming experience because it's nothing like super crazy super stressful um, you know, like I said, it's just, just going on, just doing these puzzles. But one thing though, is that, you know, having to, there are certain puzzles or certain things that, you know, for one, I, you know, I'm a cat owner. I have two cats in the house now. 
And so playing this game, it sometimes really makes you think of like, okay, I need to either think of this or look at this from a cat's perspective. Sometimes literally, because sometimes you're like looking through the room of like, okay, how do I get out or how do I get to the other side or whatever? And it's like, oh, it is literally a tiny, it is it is a little like crevice in the door or whatever, or, or walking between a fence. And, you know, versus like most games, if you're a regular human, you're like, crap, I can't squeeze through these fence bars or whatever, where it's like, yo, I'm a freaking cat. I can just walk through these metal bars, <laughs> you know, or, 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 Hey, there's a little, you know, little, uh, gap under this fence or this wall or whatever. Okay. I can just squeeze down under it or whatever. Um, you know, and, and like I said, same thing with, um, just all aspects sort of this. So that's been kind of like a neat thing. It's just, you know, like I said, just having, you know, those, uh, those different perspectives and stuff um with the game but yeah like i said it's 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 been it's been pretty chill um and stuff so far like i said i've played maybe like a maybe a few hours collectively um i don't like these like little weird creature things that chase you or whatever is very weird but um but yeah but stray like i said it's it's on i think let me see real quick Cause I'm playing it on PS5, but um, let's see, stray video game. Let's see, uh, okay, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC. So yeah, so PlayStation or PC. Um, so yeah, and, and, and I'm playing it as part of the uh, the PlayStation Essentials because I, I think I might have mentioned a couple weeks ago about how. Um, I was thinking about finally buying it's it's just like like this like a like a murder sorry motocross game called uh things like Trials Rising or something like that or whatever. Um, that me and Vash have been playing the demo for for a long time, and so I saw okay, the game by itself is twenty, which isn't bad, or I can upgrade my PlayStation PlayStation subscription for the remainder of the hundred days I had left on it for just 10 bucks and got that game included as well as stray and some other stuff so i'm like heck i'll do the 10 bucks and you know get access to this game that me and my son have been wanting to play more of and get to play stray which is another game that i've um you know been been wanting to check out and stuff whatever so but um but yeah so that's stray the other game um uh, that i've been checking out um, it's called Midnight Fight Express. Now, to anybody who may have played games like Hotline Miami or, um, or one of my little favorites on the Switch called, uh, Mr. Shifty, um, it's, it's, it's a game like that to where basically, basically you're going through these different levels um, from kind of like kind of like a top-down isometric view and you're basically just clearing out the room with all the enemies and stuff whatever and so it just has like it, it has like really dope um, like hand-to-hand combat or whatever you don't really know like like, like your character's full backstory because you kind of seem to have amnesia or whatever or you kind of get activated as like a sleeper agent or some or something like that and so um, so yeah, so you go through the different levels or whatever, and you can do like hand to hand combat, um, or you can pick up weapons, guns, different stuff, whatever, and you just take it. Basically, it's just hey, just clear out all the enemies in this room, and of course, each level gets a little bit harder, more different variety of enemies, you know, because it's just like from basic just thugs with no weapons to people with, you know, bats to people with, you know, armor or shields to people with guns and yada 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 but um but uh hotline miami was one now i never fully played all of them my wife loved hotline miami both one and two and she played the heck out of both of them and so um so when i saw this and i was listening to another podcast talking about it um and they mentioned hotline miami i was like hmm hmm you know my 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 eyebrows perked up my ears perked up you know, I'm like, okay. 
and then I saw. Uh, now, this game is out on all systems, but I'm playing it on Game Pass on Xbox. Um, but yeah, so it is it's very dope. Um, and one thing I like about it is that it has a crazy amount of customization as well as a lot of like skills and stuff to unlock. And so as you play through each level, you know, you get XP and money and stuff, whatever. So you can buy cosmetics for your character, change up how they look, how they dress, all that stuff, whatever. And then, um, and then upgrading your skills and stuff, whatever. So like I had got a, uh, a skill recently that kind of, uh, lets me like counter, uh, an attack into like a follow up move. So it's like I block an attack and then my dude does like some like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like some like quick jabs or whatever and I also got like a uh, like a, uh, a unlock where if I'm near like certain environmental stuff whatever like if I'm near a wall he'll bash his head into the wall or if I'm near a sink in the bathroom he'll smash his head through the sink or if I'm like on like a uh, a railing or something whatever I'll toss him overboard or whatever so but overall very dope very cool game like I said if you're a fan of um, Hotline Miami or uh, Mr. Shifty definitely recommend it and like i said especially if you have game pass as well um it is a uh, super worth um checking out so and just like highlight miami it has some very banger music so um so when i've been playing lately whatever i put on them headphones and that music is going and i'm just going through and just <laughs> fighting dudes or whatever and it, it, it's just a fun good time um and it's not like it's a decent length because i've already played like a couple hours and i've made it to like level I think I'm meant to like level nine or ten of forty, so still got a lot of ways to go, whatever. And it's been getting progressively harder, but in a good way. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, Midnight Fight Express. Now, on to the games that molded me over the years. Now. I kind of, I kind of like, like tackled this list from a couple of different angles, and so I kind of mainly focused on um, games that like had like games or gaming moments um, um, that like really shaped and like changed my trajectory um, as far as like how I thought about gaming and and different stuff like that or whatever, and so. I'm roughly going to talk about this in semi-chronological timeline-wise from, like, me being younger up until, you know, more recent stuff, but I might kind of mix and match some stuff in between. Um, now, while I would love to have, you know, graphics and show video for everything, whatever, I'm still not 100% for sure, like, how a lot of this, like, showing footage and stuff, whatever, works with YouTube, so I'm always hesitant <laughs> you know in doing that um just because i don't want to go through this long discussion and then i upload it to youtube and it's like sorry you can't post none of this part or whatever or we have to you know mute it or something dumb so um oops sorry so um so yeah so unfortunately you know as much as i would love to whatever i'm not really probably gonna have much visuals going on um so forgive me for that but we're we're still uh, we're still learning um, how how all this stuff goes. But um, but yeah, so diving in, um, like I've talked about many times before, even earlier in this episode, or whatever, is that like gaming has been a very big part of who I am as a person. For majority of my life, as long, as far back as I can remember, um, and like I said, that that's why it's been so hurtful, you know, that that I haven't had a chance to really play video games and stuff um, as much as I want to um, in this last year. Which, like I said, some part of it is is my own doing because I got so heavily into reading manga and buying manga and stuff. A lot of the time I spent playing games, got diverted to doing this, and now I'm trying to find a better balance and, th and stuff, whatever. But, but yeah, but I, but yeah, I have lots of uh, moments or series, like I said, that like really shape things. And so for me, 
I've pretty much been playing games for sure since I was. I kind of have I kind of have like my first like concrete memories around the age of like seven or so, six seven years old. Um, now my older siblings, you know, they play video games, especially my older sister, <laughs> big gamer. Um, even even you know. Uh, you know, rest in peace to my sister, but even, you know, as an adult and her becoming a mom and stuff, whatever, you know, she, you know, still love to play games and stuff with me, with, with her kids and stuff and everything. Um, she was a really big fan of fighting games and stuff too, whatever, especially Mortal Kombat and stuff like that. So, but, um, but yeah, so, so I kind of, you know, with being that big age gap, or whatever, I ended up getting a lot of consoles and stuff early on through, uh, through them or whatever so that's how I got like, the first Nintendo Super Nintendo and things like that through them um, I I even got a uh, I have a pair on my shelf I have a uh, an Atari 2600 with <laughs> with a case full of games which speaking of which let, let me go let me see if I can grab it real quick so of course my setup and stuff isn't really set up for this but like I said, I, I, I love doing a little bit of show and tell. And so I still have this big thing of Atari 2600 games um, that I got from back in the day. And it is, let me see. Uh, let me see. I don't know that, that that's, <laughs> sorry. Me, me, your, your boy, uh, um, sucking at math. Let me see. Um, real quick. Basically, it's about over 50 Atari 2600 games, um, that I have here in this case. Um, everything I got Stampede, I got, of course, Donkey Kong, uh, Star Master, G.I. Joe, Pitfall 2. Fishing Derby, Math Grand Prix. Oh, look, I got good. I got got ET up in here, <laughs> and who knows what else? Um, I haven't really looked at this thing in so freaking long. Um, but uh, but yeah, but it, it is a uh, what is this joust? But uh, but it, it is a very cherished memory. Let me go put this thing back up real quick. But yeah, so I I, I uh, ended up getting that from um a close friend of my mom's. Um, one day I think I think I think that maybe like her kids had grew up or something or whatever. I don't remember. But um, but she she sat across the street from us, and she gave me that, and that's been you know well over twenty years ago whatever at this point um and i still have it like so i i haven't tried to hook up the atari in years so i don't even know if, if that if the if the atari itself still works um maybe, maybe that might be a fun thing maybe try to do one day with the kids i don't know might have to play around with that or whatever but um but that being said you know that unfortunately is like the only older gaming system from back in the 90s that I still have unfortunately because um because um when I moved up to college or whatever long to make a long story short um you know my mom had got sick and she had to move out to Mississippi to stay with her sisters um or no no she she moved up to stay with my sister first before she moved out to Mississippi to stay with her sisters and so we put all of our stuff back at the time in storage well <laughs> this is a wild story so the weekend before I graduated college, um, I had got me, I finally got me another car because I, I, my whole two and a half years I was in college, um, I didn't have my own vehicle. So shout out to my friend Bree uh, for, you know, working with me and letting me her use, use her car from time to time. But, um, but um, which that's a whole other funny story too that I'll, we'll talk about someday. But, uh, but yeah, I finally got my own car. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go back home. I hadn't been home in a while and stuff, whatever. And so I was like, you know what? Before I leave or before I, you know, uh, 
finish college and move further away. Let me go pick up some stuff, whatever, to take up there, whatever. So tell me why the day I get into town, something was like, hey, drive by the storage area or whatever first. So I get there and there's some people, you know, I'm driving, I'm walking through. Look, I'm like, okay, my storage should be right here where there's a bunch of people loading up a truck with what looks like a lot of my family stuff. And long story short, I kind of find out that whoever was responsible for who was supposed to be paying for our storage unit over time had not been paying it. And so it literally had got sold and these people were cleaning it out or whatever. So I'm like, yo, whoa, 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 wait. Now, like I said, I had just bought me a car and I'm getting ready to move out of college. So I have no extra money. And so they're basically like, hey, well, we can sell you back your stuff, whatever, which sucked. Now, of course, they were at least nice enough to like, like any like personal stuff, like photos and documents and stuff like that or whatever. Of course, I got to get all that stuff, whatever. No issue. Cause it's like, hey, you can try to freaking sell me pictures of my childhood, <laughs> you know. But unfortunately, all my gaming systems or whatever were gone, except for the only one I was able, if yeah, I was like, okay, if I can only salvage one, which one of these will probably be the hardest to try to come back by? And that, and it was the Atari 2600 is, is what I went with. So I let my, my gen, uh, all my Sega Genesis stuff and my Super Nintendo, uh, NES, all that stuff gone. Uh, and a lot more stuff. Uh, but anywho. So yeah, so I've been through the ringer. Like I said, that, that's, you know, stayed with me all these years. Um, but circling back. Um, one of the first kind of like video games and series that like, that like really like opened my mind to like how different stuff is aside from just like the basis, you know, while Mario was fun, playing Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past and just how, how intricate that game was, because especially when it, you know, came to um, going back and forth between the light and the dark world and all that different stuff um, and just, just that whole series in general now majority of my fondness for the series came with the handheld games because I didn't really have I didn't I never had a GameCube or an N64 and stuff like that so I, I've never played well I've played maybe like the opening sequence of um, Ocarina of Time, um, but that's like I think when they hit remade it on 3DS. So I miss Ocarina of Time. I've never played Majora's Mask. Um, all that stuff I missed back in the day. Um, but um, I do also have a very fond memory for for uh, Oracle of Seasons on Game Boy. Um, that was just a very fun game, and like I said, just also just just something just very different to play. And the other one that I cherish a lot is uh, the Minish Cap um, on Game Boy Advance. Um, just because, once again, kind of think going back to like what, some, what I was talking about with Stray earlier, is thinking about things from a different perspective. And so that was just just a very fun and cute game. But, um, but yeah, the Zelda game, like I said, was definitely very intricate in like I said, like those early years to like my early teens and stuff, whatever, playing those games. Um, now. <laughs> this one I still laugh laugh about to this day where thinking back to my child brain so for my 7th birthday cause, cause for those who do not know my birthday is January 6th and so with it being so close to Christmas a lot of times you know um, certain people in my family would just give me just hey we'll just get you just a super big gift um you know, to cover for a Christmas or a birthday or whatever, uh, or to cover for both of them, whatever. And so, my mama, my mom, and my sister <laughs> took me to Walmart to let me pick out a game system. And <laughs> childhood Robert, I ended up picking the Sega Genesis, which hey, it is what it is, and it's it put me on the, on the life trajectory I went on now. But I also potentially have the opportunity to get a PlayStation 1. But 
my seven my well let me think because this 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 Depending on what year it was, it might have been either me me going from six to seven or me going from seven to eight. So this might have been Christmas ninety seven, maybe. But anyway, I, I remember being close to seven years old basically. Uh, and <laughs> I was looking at the glass case over there and of course CDs and discs, whatever, that's all new. I'm used to you know cartridges or whatever. And so I'm like, PlayStation. PlayStation, me thinking Playground. I'm like, what the heck? No. I'll, I'll take the Sega Genesis. Um, and, and of course, it was it was the, which I later found out later in my life, was the third version of the Genesis because I didn't realize how long that that, se- how long that se- uh, console had been out. But so, of course, it was the one that had the Sonic uh, 1 packing game. And so... And funny thing is, is that my sister also bought a second Genesis for her, for her and her husband, um, house too or whatever. And so we all kind of bonded over playing Sonic and different stuff like that or whatever. But that, that is just like a moment that like, <laughs> I am like, man, how different would my life have been if I would have freaking got a freaking PlayStation back at that point in time. But I will say I did get a chance to play playstation systems over the years because i've as i mentioned before with the big age gap between me and my oldest brother um my oldest nephew is only four years younger than me so growing up my brother got my nephew whatever games he wanted or whatever so we are young kids to young teens and stuff whatever um and we played a lot of Grand Theft Auto and wrestling games. So, you know, my first exposure to, to uh, it was a GTA Vice City. Um, playing over at my, my, my cousin Derek at my Aunt Sheila's house. Uh, playing that game. And of course, you know, I am, what, maybe like 11 by this point? Because when, when did? That, that sounds about right. GTA Vice City let's see Vice City was 2002 so yeah so so yeah so I was 12 12 13 preteen somewhere and that's in that time frame or whatever and my mind was freaking blown like seeing this game or whatever but uh but eventually you know my nephew got it or whatever and of course it was just us you know just goofing off for hours and hours um, driving around the city, doing crazy stuff, whatever. Um, I always love freaking doing, you know, once they start doing like the, like the all cars explode cheat code. Some very fond memories. And then of course with the wrestling games, WWE, WWE, uh, now nah, I, th- I think this would have been WWF, but hold on. Let me see. WWF. Let me see. Here it comes. Okay, okay, so it was WWE by then. Okay, so yeah, so so here comes the WWE, here comes the pain, and I think I think it was Smack. Let me see. SmackDown, shut your mouth. Um all, all of those wrestling games from the early two thousands. We put the heck out of them, as well as all the of course all the Raw versus SmackDowns, but but the but the uh, Here Comes the Pain and, and Shut Your Mouth were kind of like kind of like the two big ones that first started out um and so we had so many memories of just like playing wrestling games watching wrestling as well um i remember some years later when when we were way older um shoot i think i think i think i, I probably i think I, yeah i was in high school because i remember i was working <laughs> So this might have been the holiday of like my junior or senior year, probably my senior year, because if I if I had a job, but my nephew was staying over for uh, I think it was like Thanksgiving break or something or whatever, and we had got GTA Four, and uh, yeah GTA Four, and uh, what else was it? Um, no, okay, no, no, it, it was just GTA Four. 
and it, it may it might have been a wrestling game, but but I but I for sure remember a lot of GTA Four, and us watching a lot of wrestling, and I remember we literally played GTA Four around the clock in shifts until we beat that game, cause like you know I would leave and go to work, he'd be playing it while I'm at work, I would come back, play some whatever you know. Um, you know, whenever he fell asleep, I'll be up all night playing. Then when I fell asleep, he would get up and play. It was just such a very awesome and memorable moment. Um, going back and forth and playing that stuff. Um, and of course, same thing with San Andreas. How, how can I not talk about San Andreas? Just like that whole vibe and stuff of playing that game. And like I said, just, just playing all them games and stuff with, with my nephew. Um, and like I said, just, just the freedom that those games just brought you. And just like, we just... Just driving around, just getting into as much chaos as we could possibly get into um, back in back in the day during those times and stuff, whatever. So, but, um, but yeah, but lots of fond memories doing that. Like I said, like growing up, um, summer break, winter break, whenever I got a chance to spring break, go and go to my my brother's house or go to my sister in law's house, and me and my nephew just be on the game all break <laughs> uh and of course you know that was like those those times were where i was in my like early like preteens to early teens were super memorable for me and media in general because like i said i got a chance to play the freaking the ps1 to the ps2 and all those games and stuff with my nephew um to uh of course uh, you know that's also a time where i got really heavy into um, watching Toonami and stuff, whatever, late at night on Saturday nights and stuff, whatever. Um, so that that was definitely a very uh, important time frame of my life. Now, going back a little bit, of course, another really big game series for me, of course, is freaking Pokemon. Um, played Pokemon games from the time when they first came out, I think with, with Red and Blue. Um, so that would have been like 97. So once again, I'm about seven, eight years old and got access to these games um, back at school um, and stuff, whatever. So and, uh, you know, eventually ended up getting me, you know, a Game Boy and a Game Boy Color and all this stuff. Um, but I have my my fondest memories are with Gen 2. And especially Pokemon Crystal, because Pokemon Crystal was the first game that I bought with my own money. And so it, it just made it, it just made it that much more, you know, um, meaningful, meaningful for me. And sorry, I'm trying to see, cause I still have a lot of my. Uh, Pokemon cartridges and stuff um, and, and Game Boy cartridges and stuff so let me see what all I have oh yeah yeah I got some goodies let me pour these out and go through these real quick but, um, but yeah but I, I'll never forget because um, once again it was around time for my birthday which let me see let me see Pokemon Crystal US release date um july 30th 2001 so it was the summertime so um so yeah so i remember going to the store with my mom and my mom's friend dropped us off whatever and we went to the electronics department or whatever and like i said i've been saving up my little money or whatever and so I went to the electronics department and i freaking purchased pokemon crystal which I do not know where my version of Crystal is. Um, hmm. Or or where my Game Boy Color is either. I need to track those down. They're probably oh uh, yeah, they're they're in one of one of my other backpacks. Well, can't find my Game Boy Color, but of course, found my copy of Pokemon Crystal. Look how shiny and beautiful that is. Um, and I'm pretty sure still works. Should. Um, we, we're going to test it out live. On my special edition 
Game Boy Advance SP, which I'm going to tell you about this story in a second, but... Oh, you hear them sounds? Let, let's, let's go down memory lane with these sounds real quick. <laughs> Man, I, I just freaking love it. The, the sound of the unknown and stuff. Man. Just, just, just too, too freaking good. But yeah, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, y'all, I, uh, I, we went in the store and we picked this up and, um, and i never forget, you know, I had asked my mom, I was like, so, uh, do you need help? buying any groceries or do you need me for anything else and she's like why you want to go you want to go sit in the car and play a game and i was like yes ma'am and she was like go ahead so uh, so i went sat out in the car with my mom's friend took out the package booted it up and just went through what y'all just heard hearing that music and the intro or whatever and like like i said i already loved gen 2 in general but i never forget the first time i walked into, walked into some tall grass um and and uh uh and ran into a Pidgey and I'm like okay a Pidgey I've seen a freaking million Pidgeys and then the freaking animation where he like flapped his where he like flapped his wings and I was like oh my god they move <laughs> my my 11 year old brain was out of there but um but yeah, so, so yeah, so so I played that, and like I said, of course, with with Gen two in general of Pokemon, I I just loved gaming in general. Just back 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 then, whatever. Just because, of course, you know, we don't have the ease of access and getting spoiled on stuff as you know compared to uh, back then. Um, just because it was like, I had, I had no clue that the first whole game, basically the whole first region was in the, you know, in gen, in the gen two games until I was playing freaking my Pokemon uh, silver version. And, you know, finally went back to my hometown after I, after I think if I remember correctly, after I beat the Leaf four or whatever, came back to my hometown. Oh yeah, I got surf. Let me just surf to the right from my house. And then it's like, oh, hey, you're in Kanto. And it's like, wow. And then, of course, we all can never forget climbing Mount Silver after getting our butts beaten in. And it's like, okay, made it through all these areas. Darn it, all my Pokemon are dead. What, what, is, what is at the top of this cave, this mountain? And it's just uh, a lone person standing at the top. Turn around three dots. And you're like, okay. The battle music starts. And freaking red with just, just such a hype moment, such hype memories. Um, and, and of course, I loved all the stuff with the secret of the unknown and the uh, the legendary dogs and all that stuff. And, and I even enjoyed the mystery of stuff in Gen 3 where you had dive and they had all the freaking underwater caves and you know you had the kind of like a like the quote-unquote like the hieroglyphic stuff whatever in the unknown language and whatever else and it that whole era just was just just so just so memorable for me as a child and let me see real quick what all other games i got here i got a pokemon gold version Pokemon Yellow. Um, I have some, <laughs> I have some Game Boy Advance videos. So I have some episodes of SpongeBob. Let me put these back in this bag before I get my stuff all cluttered up here. Um, more episodes of SpongeBob, Cartoon Network Collection, uh, Fairly Odd Parents. 
and and for 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 those of y'all that might be young and it's like 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 what like what is Game Boy Advance video? So basically, it is actually since I got this my Game Boy here, it is basically <laughs> oof <laughs> giant dust bunny in that one. Uh, it is basically the whole freaking TV show um, or episodes of a TV show on your Game Boy. Oh, no. Why did I say not compatible? Okay. So, what I have in here is freaking... Look at that. Four Kids logo. <laughs> freaking Yu-Gi-Oh! on my freaking Game Boy, man. This is so hype, man. Look at this. Freaking watching Yu-Gi-Oh on my Game Boy. Come on now. Come on. That that is so freaking dope. But yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, what is this? Uh okay, this isn't a movie, but but I got, you know, this some of these I just got from random stuff over the years, but from especially from working at GameStop or whatever, but I got a freaking Beyblade game and Happy Feet. <laughs> and of course one of my favorites the legacy Dragon Ball Z Legacy of Goku one and two. That was such a fun game. Um, and of course the uh, Mario Brothers Classic and all that stuff. Uh, oh, Dragon Ball Z Boost Fury. Your boy got the good stuff. <laughs> but uh, and if in the action replay. But um, but yeah. So and if, and somehow I can't remember. I can't remember how, but somehow I over the years I got a second uh, Game Boy Advance SP. Um, still, and hey, freaking full charge. I ain't touched this thing in freaking years. Um, now speaking of Game Boy in years, let me tell you the funny yet slightly tragic story of. Me and my Game Boy Advance SP, which this device is what has me curious about maybe getting one of those new uh, Samsung uh, flip phones um, or foldables or whatever. Because the new ones, I was looking at the other day or whatever, it looks like it's about the same freaking size when it's folded up as the Game Boy Advance. And just the two-tone colors or whatever just remind me of it. But anywho, so got this for my 11th birthday. My sister-in-law, shout out to her. You probably never hear this or see this or whatever, but shout out to you, Teresa. Love you so freaking much. Um, but for my birthday, took me to Walmart. I was like, okay, hey, do you get to pick one thing? Which, you know, her and my brother spoiled me all the time growing up. Because, you know, um, whenever I was at their house during Christmas break, summer vacation, whatever, I would be babysitting my niece and nephew. And at the end of every break or whatever, they would always treat treat me and either hey take me clothes shopping buy me whatever I need, or you know maybe treat me to something like I said like this. So I decided hey I want to get a Game Boy Advance and I specifically want to get this special edition one, cause hey why would you not you know why why would you you know just just want a plain Jane color like the other one I had, uh, so I got this whatever loved it cherished it. One day it came up missing, and. Now, I, I was dealing with some shady stuff as a kid with, you know, I had a buddy who would, you know, and I can, I can admit this now because this, this is well over 20 years past statute of limitations, <laughs> hopefully, but um, I had a buddy who, uh, you know, would maybe uh, steal other kids stuff, and I'm talking about everything from Game Boys to Pokemon cards to video games, all, all types of nerdy stuff like that or whatever. And so, of course, tit for tat. So I'm thinking, yo, somebody finally got me and stole my Game Boy. Was missing for years, literal years, because it wasn't in my backpack. I didn't, I didn't see it, quote unquote, for a long time. <sighs> now, my bedroom I had at my mom's house growing up. My bedroom I had um, wasn't the biggest room or whatever, and so. I never really moved my bed around too much or whatever. So tell me why. Years later, and I mean years. 
like I was probably in high school by this point. So years later, I decided to like to like do like some you know, reshuffling around in my room or whatever. So I moved my bed. Um, or e- either I moved my either I was moving my bed or I was doing some type of like real deep cleaning or whatever. Which is sad when I think about it, but um um I was looking under my bed or whatever for something or whatever. And I can't remember. I, I think I felt a lump. And I was like, what the heck? So I shined a light on it. I'm like, what the heck is that? Because I couldn't recognize it because this thing was literally under my bed for years. For And it was under my bed for so freaking long. It was covered in a clump of dust. But, and shout out to Nintendo. Because... I picked it up off the floor, like I said, been under my bed for literally at least probably like five years or more. And I'm like, man, this thing probably don't even work no more or whatever. Tell me why I turn, I, I hit the power button after years and it booted up. And I ended up, I ended up, you know, you know, because of course I eventually told her, you know, told myself like, hey, I lost it. Da, da, da. She was upset or whatever. But it, it wasn't an immediate thing. I lost it maybe like after like a year or whatever. But, um, um, but I told her years later after I found I was like, Hey, you remember when I remember I've lost my that Game Boy you got me? She was like, Yeah, I was like, I found it and it was under my bed. So all these years I had thought that somebody had stolen it at my backpack or that maybe I lost it on the bus or at school or some other weird place, or whatever. It was freaking under my bed all these years. <laughs> so moving on from there. So the next, I would say, kind of, kind of like, kind of like biggest era for me with gaming happened many years later when I had finished high school and I was working. So I was this, I was nineteen. So two thousand nine, I was nineteen, working at Dairy Queen, your boy, you know. Flipping them burgers, flipping them them blizzards. <laughs> Which figure was that? I, I might have a work history episode or something or whatever. Cause like, cause man, the first time I worked at Dairy Queen, and they let me do that. Cause of course this, you know, it's like whoa, it's like magic, and I got to do that. I was like, I, I got to like make it and serve it to a customer. And I did that, and I was like, <gasps> but anywho. So your boy, hey, you know, I'm 19, living at home. I live in freaking small, freaking Jasper, Texas. Ain't a lot of ain't a lot of expenses or whatever, so I'm just stacking up money. So, but of course back then I'm young. Uh I had no bank account or whatever. I knew nothing of banking and stuff, whatever. So all my money, every paycheck, whatever, I'll catch my check and I'll just toss my money to an envelope like I was freaking breaking bad or something. <laughs> and just had it under my mattress. So your boy just had hundreds and hundreds of dollars that I wish I had today. But I do not, <laughs> and so, um, so there, there was a uh, there was a big pawn shop, or whatever in town, quote unquote big, and so I I went there, or whatever, and mind you, once again, no car, your boy walking all over town, or whatever. So I walked to the pawn shop, and this is like a maybe like a thirty minute walk, or whatever, and I get there one day, and I see they had a fat backwards compatible PS3. And so I'm like, yo, how much was it? And of course, y'all know back when PS3 came out, it was freaking like $700 or whatever. This thing was maybe like a, maybe a couple hundred bucks, I think, whatever, by this point or whatever. Whatever it was, it was, it was a deal I could not pass up. So I was like, hey, how much was that? They told me, and I, I never forget, they had uh, the couple games that was in there was, uh, I, I for sure had got a Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit. I think I got like Transformers the game. And those are kind of kind of like the first couple of things I had bought or whatever, but um, but I was like, hey, can I test it out? They hooked it up. I put it around or whatever, whatever, and I was like, can y'all hold this? I'll be back and let me go get some money. So I walked back home, <laughs> got my little money or whatever, and I, I think I think I'm pretty sure yeah, I tossed it in a backpack or whatever, my little drawstring backpack I had, um. Which I probably still have here somewhere, or whatever. Touch my little drawstring backpack, or my little envelope, with my money, or whatever. And I walk in the door. I must have had biggest cheese and smile on my face. And the guy's like, "So you back to buy?" And I'm like, 
Yes, sir. So, now once again, <laughs> young and dumb, but hey, I ain't care. So, here I am, walking through the streets, through the hood, with this big, big, pardon the language, this big ass box. <laughs> They clearly says PS3. So I'm walking 30 minute walk from the pawn shop to my house. PS3 box. Backpack full of money. <laughs> but you can't tell me nothing. But I made it home safely. No. It was a quiet day. Nobody was on the streets or whatever, really. Um, plus I knew plus I knew hey certain routes to take through whatever. Anyway, your boy made it home in one piece. And I got it hooked up. And it was the beginning of a whole new era for everything. Because like I said, up to this point, yes, I got to play the PS1 and PlayStation 2. Um, but that was only either when my nephew came in town and I got to play it when I, or when I went to my brother or sister-in-law's house or whatever growing up. Otherwise, I only had, like I said, I had, you know, the original Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and the Sega Genesis that was all I had for home consoles and of course the Atari other than that all those years I only ever had the uh the Nintendo handheld so the Game Boy Game Boy Color Game Boy Advance um and stuff like that or whatever and so um and so me getting a PS3 blew my freaking mind now I'm trying to think, cause, cause, cause I'm trying to remember the order of things. So, like I said, I'm trying to remember the order of events. Cause my sister them had a PlayStation Three as well. Cause and, and I remember I I think I, I I have to talk to my nephew again or whatever my my sister's kids about that but I want to say I think that they had either got it in a deal or something or whatever because because I think that I, I I think that they said that they were in Walmart one day and there was a line for something in the electronics and it was like oh what is this and they just hopped in the line and they ended up getting it was the Metal Gear Solid Four like PS3 bundle or whatever. And of course, at the time, you know, my sister didn't even play those type of games. My nieces and nephews were way too little to play those type of games, so they just had a lot of games like that, just in shrimp, shrink up or whatever. But I remember playing some stuff because, because I, because, because, um, because for the first year after after high school, I moved up stay with my sister now, and got a job at GameStop, um, and Foot Locker, or no, no, Finish Line. GameStop and Finish Line at Stonebriar Mall up here in Frisco. Um, once again, a story for another day for a job episode or whatever, but they were on opposite ends of the mall. And if you know Stonebriar Mall, you know GameStop and, and uh, Finish Line were opposite ends of the mall. But anywho, point is, I got to play a little bit of a PS3 during that point or whatever. Um, and like I said, I can't remember which was which, but I remember playing the PS3 in my sister's house. Um, and this might happen when I move back there or whatever, but anywho, me getting access to PS3 or whatever changed the whole game, um, for me. And so I remember, um, I remember the first time I got my sister's copy of Metal Gear Solid 4 when I was at their house and I unwrapped it because they had just put it up or whatever. And so booting up that game. And seeing the loading screen, and once again, I've never played any of the Metal Gear Solid games, so I'm just like, okay, what is this game, whatever. This M-rated game, the most realistic looking game I had seen at that point in time in my life, like I said, this is like 2008. And I just see just this old guy with an eye patch and a bandana, and he's just on just the loading screen. It's just him just smoking. And I am like, this is too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> what did I sign up for? But like I said, like hey, only being able to play like I said, you know, like I said, like some PS2 games and stuff over the years, but mainly being relegated to, to Nintendo handhelds for majority of my life. To yo, 
PS3 graphics, Blu-ray, all this stuff, whatever. But like I said, when I got my own, and I like I said, I had fun playing Burst Limit and stuff, whatever. <clears throat> then things truly changed with the game on my shirt, Infamous One. Now, and once again, shout out! Hey, I, I love this shirt. This shirt I have on right now, like I said, for those who are listening, I am wearing a shirt from the for the, from the uh, the PS3 game Infamous by Sucker Punch, the same people who brought you Ghost of Tsushima um, on PS4, PS5 a couple years ago. Um, but um, and and of course they also did Sly Cooper back in the day. Um, but Infamous One, so spring of 2009 the big battle between infamous the ps3 exclusive and then prototype the hype machine behind prototype which was going to be on all consoles and stuff whatever and this is where once again another divergent path happened in my life like with the whole sega genesis versus playstation thing so i walked to walmart once again 30 minute plus walk <laughs> I walked to Walmart because I'm like I'm like because you know I'm looking at the commercials and I've been hype, you know, because 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 I think around this time too I would be I would go to the library because I had no computer at home so I would go to the library and that's where I would like of course check up on G4. Um, I I'm trying to think was I listening to, to the feedback podcast around this time maybe, um, the G4 feedback podcast um, and all that stuff but but for sure checking G4 for gaming news and stuff whatever, um, and of course getting the Game Informer magazines. All the hype was around Prototype. And so that's what I had my eyes set on. So I'm like, okay, hey, Prototype is out. I'm going to go to the store and buy it. So I get to, so I walk up to Walmart or whatever, tired after my long journey. They're sold out of Prototype. So I'm like, okay. And of course, like I said, I'm in a small country town. Walmart is the biggest thing store we have. And of course, years later, after I've done moving out of town, or whatever they they eventually get a get a GameStop or whatever. Um, but at that point in time, it was only Walmart, and so it wasn't like up here where I have a overabundance of store locations now in 2022, where if one store touches they don't have it. Okay, hey, I have I can go to GameStop, Walmart, Best Buy. I can just order online. None of those options. You know, freaking, what was that, 14 years ago at this point or whatever? Um, 13, 14 years ago at this point. Um, so I was like, crap. And of course, you know, don't know when, they, when they're going to get any more in. And of course, I'm not leaving here empty-handed. So I start looking at Infamous 1. Now, let me see if I have... Um, Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm fine. But, uh, but Infamous One. There, there was just so much stuff. Um, with this, first of all, first of all, the game cover for Infamous One. If if y'all have never seen. Um, hold on, let's see. Infamous PS3. Um, come on now. So, cover for Infamous 1. So, I'm looking at the box. I'm, 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 I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that, that was the other game I heard about with prototype, whatever don't know much about it or whatever and so i saw that and then i also saw oh they also had gta 4 was in as well so i'm like oh yeah i haven't played grand theft auto maybe i'll get grand theft auto but something about this cover for infamous one and i don't even remember what the back of the box um description was for infamous at the time um i don't know if i, I don't know if i can find the back of the box Oh yeah, here it is. Let let's see if I can uh um okay. Oh <laughs> uh, nah, yeah, I can't really see that, but 
A massive explosion rips through six square blocks of Empire City, leveling everything and everyone in its path. At the center of the blast crater, a lone man has survived the event and has been changed forever. Players will experience what happens when a real person suddenly starts developing superpowers. That part was the part that probably got me where it was a superpower thing. So I'm like, okay. And so I said, screw it. I'm going to try Infamous. And that whole opening sequence from him being a, car- a courier who actually, uh, um, unbeknownst to him, was carrying a bomb, went off. He ends up getting elect- electricity superpowers, whatever. Changed the game forever because... Once again, I had never really played an open world game of this style. And getting a chance to play freaking Infamous and you just freaking like, I, I love like when you got the ability where you're freaking like grinding on the power lines and you had the whole karma system to, because depending on, you know, if you're help out civilians, you get another positive karma and you know more blue electricity or if you're hurting people you get the red and the red electricity and stuff whatever um and it was just such a fun game to play and the story of it was very dope because spoilers one of my favorite and once again this era of not getting spoiled on stuff just being able to just experience stuff whatever finding out that the main villain of the game Kessler was you from the future coming back to basically train yourself to prepare for even greater threats known as the beast which that's who you eventually go against in infamous too but when that when that whole fight sequence and stuff happened at the, at the end of the game and then kessler when you taking him down and he puts his hand on your face and he's like i'm gonna show you something and you get revealed that hey he was you from the future and he had to come back and do all this crazy stuff to get you better prepared for this looming threat wow 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 um and yeah and i fell in love with the series like i kept playing it from there and so proto and of course you know prototype got okay reviews or whatever but you know i'm glad that things played out the, the way that they played out um over the years and another big game that changed things for me later on that year or whatever was uncharted 2 because of course uncharted 2 for one the cinematics and stuff of how this game looked at the time was beyond anything else and just like the way naughty dog did the physics and stuff but the biggest thing was the opener for this game the fact that the beginning of the game is actually a sequence from like midway through the game because you start off the game on this train and you're like like why is stuff falling and you find out that you're is that you're injured inside of this train hanging off the side of a freaking mountain cliff and so, of course, you're like, yo, <laughs> what happened? I need answers. And so that is like a fantastic way to start a game. And like I said, just the whole like, because, of course, I, I, I knew of Indiana Jones, but I, but I never watched any of those movies. So I didn't have any attachment to that type of stuff that, uh, that Uncharted and Nathan Drake was kind of built off of. But playing Uncharted 2 super awesome game like i said just getting a chance to just go around to all these different worldwide locations the big crazy uh cinematic scenes um of course the infamous scene on the train where you have like moving physics on top of moving moving physics which is like okay you're on top of a train that is literally traveling around somewhere and you're able to move and do all this different stuff for it which sounds like okay so what in 2022 at the time that was a freaking amazing but yeah, that game, super awesome. And eventually, of course, I went back and I played Uncharted 1 and then 3 and so on and so forth. Um, and just, just Naughty Dog games in general because, of course, years later, playing The Last of Us as well. And I'll never forget, like, the first time they showed off gameplay at that E3 demo back at the back in the day. And just seeing, like, how 
how visceral and how gritty Last of Us was um, compared to not only Uncharted, but a lot of games that I had played and played and seen at that point in time. And so I love Last of Us. Um, you know, I still enjoy Last of Us too. You know, I feel like you know some parts of it dragged on, but but Last of Us just kind of just took that cinematic notch up to a whole other level from the bar that Uncharted had built over the years and stuff. But um, but yeah, Uncharted two, another key game. Like I said, that and um and Last of Us and stuff, and. Batman Arkham Asylum. The hand-to-hand, -hand, the free-flowing combat in that game. Because I loved Batman in general. Because Especially because growing up, I loved watching um, Batman the Animated Series on TV growing up. And so, okay, there's going to be a video game. And it looks like it's going to be a step above all the others. I'll never forget... Almost every day for months, I would walk up to our to Walmart in town, and I would play the demo because they had back in the day when you had the demo stations at Walmart or IP. <laughs> um, I loved it because and, and I loved, I missed that era because it was like, okay, hey, you want to try out these games or whatever? Well, hey, go to Walmart, they have them up, or whatever. But I never forget like how much my freaking neck and shoulders hurt because. I'm st I, I was literally there for hours, hours, cause heck, if I'm gonna walk thirty minutes to forty minutes, forty five minutes, however long it took me to walk to Walmart or whatever, I'm gonna get my times worth. So I would go there for hours and just stand there playing the challenge rooms, or whatever, and just being so hype, or whatever. And then of course, when the actual game came out, and just like it's like, yo, I am truly embodying. Batman and stuff, whatever. It was just, it, it was just so freaking awesome, um, to 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 get a chance to just get to do that and to experience that and stuff. So and of course seeing the evolution of that with, um, Arkham City and stuff, whatever. Um, just 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 a truly awesome series. Um, now. Now we're kind of getting to the next era of things with gaming and me going to college. Because, of course, you know, I'm talking about, you know, you know, meeting more friends that are also nerdy and stuff, whatever, um, and getting exposed to more games and stuff, whatever. But I finally tried out. Assassin's Creed 2 and because like because because I don't know because for me I never really played a game that had like gameplay systems and stuff like that and so the way the way things looked on the in the trailers and stuff whatever and commercials it just looked weird in a way to where it was like it was like okay this seems like there's a lot more going on here than what I'm used to and I never forget I think it was at a uh, some some used game store or whatever next to Hastings in Longview <laughs> um they had a used copy of Assassin's Creed 2, so I'm like, screw it. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to try it out, and I fell in love with it. Um, just and, 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 like, and, like, to this day, I'll never forget, and I still love watching the freaking um, Assassin's Creed 2 um, launch trailer and stuff, and just hearing SCO just, uh, just narrate everything about like his life and the journey you're the journey you're about to go on um of uh, following STL over the course of all these years and stuff from from him being a teen to watching you know what happened with his family and then his path of vengeance and of course you know eventually getting to get into play with the SCO across to Brotherhood and Revelations um and seeing him just age and different stuff over the years but uh but yeah it, it was just so very dope of course getting the freaking da vinci doing all your inventions and stuff whatever was so cool but um but yeah but these, these but yeah that that just like really gave me my first exposure to open world games with i guess i guess maybe like like kind of like a little bit more like rpg style mechanics and stuff whatever um 
but it, it was just super dope and super eye opening. I'm glad I finally gave it a shot. Um, but yeah, I, I just love this like part of the trailer, freaking just like with the just like the multi blades and stuff, whatever. Um, so good, so good. Um, but the next big game, <laughs> they really took my exposure to stuff to a whole nother level. Mass Effect 2. And of course, there have been maybe some other games mixed in here or whatever. And and this is one of those perks over the years of working at GameStop and getting a chance to rent games and take games home for free was, you know, I saw all the hype for Assassin's for uh, uh, Mass Effect 2 when it was about to come out and all this different stuff. And, you know, everything involved with that or whatever. And so I'm like, I don't know. I never played Mass Effect 1 because for one, it was a Xbox exclusive at the time. And so I'm like, I don't know. I never really played like a role playing game like this, whatever. But they did such a fantastic job with, um, with Mass Effect 2. Because one thing I loved about Mass Effect um, 2 is... Hold on, let's see. Character trailers is I love how how they had uh, trailers for all the characters and stuff, and so it was just really dope getting a chance to kind of like kind of like an interview style get like a little like a little bit of like uh, insight and preview into all these different characters that you might. Um, encounter over the course of the game, and just getting a chance to see like see like 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 what their abilities and skills are, um, you know what, um, what their personality and stuff is like. It it, it was all just you know just 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 really cool and stuff. And so, honestly, I go back sometimes and. And rewatch some of these from you know from from time to time and stuff, um, you know just 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 because, and so yeah. But that that that's kind of like like what sold me was like all the freaking character trailers and stuff like that. Um, and then like freaking actually getting to play Mass Effect two, and the way they did the opening and just kind of introduced you to the world and it was kind of like kind of a nice little introductory point into the series and stuff whatever and i i think i put like 57 almost 60 hours into that game and it was just a memorable experience like none other that i had up to that point um of just like the depth of the story and like i said not only getting a chance like to like like have all these different characters on your team but actually getting the chance to actually know them personally and go on all these different individual missions with them their loyalty missions and so on and so forth freaking fantastic game and awesome series in general um uh another kind of like wild one I just touch on really quick is like heavy rain and just just a lot of a lot of like the quantic dream games over the years because like that style of gameplay with like the different choices because like heavy rain was wild with the choices you had to make um with the game and because i think the game had like 20 something endings or something crazy um but just like not knowing um because like you know you get to play as different characters whose stories can interweave and intersect or whatever or if you, if you end up messing up and one of your characters dies then the, then the story would just adapt and just keep going um without that character and stuff whatever so just kind of just kind of like getting like that first sort of introduction to that style of game was really cool and then also and that also kind of ties into eventually you know playing you know telltale's walking dead season one um and then also life is strange season one um because especially with life is strange there are some choices where it's like okay making the choice and then having to live with it but of course life is strange season one you have the time rewind ability so it's like, okay i maybe i didn't like how that went let me go back and see 
what doing another option might do or whatever. But um, but yeah, all those type of games was a whole nother like I say exposure to the new genre and stuff. Now, two big ones and going back to Rockstar and stuff, whatever. Red Dead Redemption and L.A. Noir. Get into play a Western game, and then get into play a detective game from like a detective game from like the set in like the fifties or something or whatever. Um, Red Dead Redemption, and that that is another game that that just has a very memorable uh, launch trailer and stuff for me just because you know hearing um john marston you know just narrating everything as you're just like yo yeah some 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 wild stuff is is about to go down um you know um in this game and i freaking had a freaking blast playing that game um and and the freaking ending spoilers you know just the the unexpected nature with Red Dead Redemption, like I said, for one, getting just getting a chance to play a freaking western. I've never never played a western game before, and getting a chance to do that, and was just so dope. Just getting a chance to just be in that environment, in that setting, and hunting down your old uh, posse and stuff, and then the freaking ending where the kind of kind of like the double ending where you know you get you know you end up dying your john dies and you think okay the game's over credits rolled then you come back and you're playing again but now you're playing as as his son grown up years later on the hunt to kill the dude who led them who led the uh the group of people who to kill you and that was so freaking dope getting to come back as jack marston all these years later super crazy twist um and the same thing with la noir for as a little bit of some some janky stuff that that game had it was still um still like i said something just very different very unique uh to to get to play you know like i said a, a game like that where you kind of like where you're making these choices and stuff like that or whatever and and rp to team bondi because i don't think they exist no more um because man that one game they were advertising that they were working on after la noir but never came out but anyway get to do this, this this detective work working with the cops and stuff whatever and you're having to interrogate people and decide like, okay do you believe what they're saying do you not believe them and stuff um and the other dope thing about this game too is that it exposed me to to the tv series mad men because the main character in la noir or the actor who's who they model um and who plays the main character in la noir is a uh pretty big character in uh mad men so that was also kind of cool just to kind of get exposure to something else um from that as well but um and once again spoilers for la noir your character dies <laughs> you freaking get swept up in like a uh, uh, like a flood or something crazy, whatever. But that was something else. I was like, yo, okay, two games in a row, Red Dead Redemption and LA Noir, y'all killing characters and stuff off, whatever. Um, you know, and hell, which I guess, you know, I'll just go and just mention it now, or whatever. Freaking, um, which I, I'll talk about more about this, like at a later date, but um, but freaking same thing with Red Dead Redemption 2. Just getting a chance to go back and see the Western and stuff, whatever. It was. Just so freaking dope, but um, but yeah, but those games are so freaking awesome. Um, a few other games I kind of want to just touch on really quickly. Um, some games that that like really like shaped the bond with my nieces and nephews, and now with with my own kids now. But uh, but um, Little Big Planet and the Rayman Origins slash Legends games. Um, getting a chance to play those with my nieces and nephews around that time because they were all very young at that time and you know all of those games especially like little big planet was super dope because it's like up to four of us could play together whatever and like the customization and having all the different outfits and stuff whatever was just so fun to play um rayman legends you could play multiple people and stuff as well 
And a third I'll throw on it too is, uh, is the Sonic and Sega All-Stars racing game. Because that game was so freaking dope. And we played so many hours of that game. Um, highly recommend it. If you're looking for a cool game for yourself and your kids to play whatever. Highly recommend it. But, um, but Little Big Planet, especially when Little Big Planet 2 came out. Um, that was kind of a cool way for me to kind of stay in touch and play with my nieces and nephews while I was away is that we played that online together from time to time. And so that was just a super awesome experience, um, getting a chance to do that with them. Um, and my, my niece, um, Lydia, my, my sister's youngest daughter, um, who, Lord, she freaking, she's in high school now, (laughs) but she was like freaking like Vash, like that, like Vash is four about to be five. She was like his age back at that point in time when we were doing this stuff, whatever, and getting a chance to like these games being like her kind of first experience with games like this, whatever, um, or just, just memories I'll always hold dear in my heart. Um, and like I said, like even now, you know, like I said, I started playing Rayman Legends, um, back, you know, still a little bit more carryover from Rayman Origins with my nieces and nephews. And now I'm playing that with Vash now, you know, we play that all the time. And so that's just so important to me, just like having that continuation carrying on and stuff, whatever. So, so yeah, so, um, those are kind of like, kind of like some of like, like the big tempo series and moments and stuff or whatever. But a couple of like honorable mentions I want to mention as well is just like Portal 2 and Portal, both of those games, like just like reshaping how I think <laughs> and approach games because I do like a first person like puzzle game like that or whatever. It's nothing I've never played like that before. Um so super dope game or, or games. Um Bloodborne just me being able to 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 persevere <laughs> and make it through the challenge of one of those games. Uh, so shout out to Bloodborne for that. Um, Until Dawn, y'all know I don't really deal with and fool with spooky or horror stuff, whatever. But Until Dawn is one that I really enjoyed um, playing or whatever, and, and I really want to try out this. Uh, I keep forgetting the name until Don Studio a new game uh, like I said I can't, I can't seem to remember for nothing or whatever um, let me see uh, The Quarry it's kind of like a spiritual successor to uh, to uh Lord, um, until dawn, but um, but yeah, so but yeah, until dawn, highly recommend, it, especially as we're coming back up on spooky season. Spooky season, if you've never played that, then hey, get on it, play it. Um, wait, did they make did they make little nightmares? No, okay, no, they didn't, okay, but um. Let me see what else. Uh, shout out to Journey for like being kind of like that first kind of like a uh, like asynchronous experience, or whatever. Because, because you know, in Journey, you know, there's no dialogue, so you just communicate through like like musical like chirping between characters, or whatever. And throughout your literally journey throughout the game, you encounter other um characters or stuff, whatever that also look like you, whatever. And people come and go throughout your game, but you don't, and this is the beautiful thing is that you don't realize until after you beat the game that one, I can't remember if I knew this playing the game or not, but, um, before playing the game, but, uh, but all these other characters you've been meeting were actually other players, um, throughout your journey or whatever. And so at the end of the game, when the credits were rolling, they list all the gamer tags for everybody that you encountered as you played throughout the game. And one thing I loved about that game, for one, it was beautiful in the music. I still never forget that one kind of like side, uh, like just like gliding on the sand or whatever with like a beautiful like sunset in the background or whatever. But I love that you can like collect these like scarf pieces 
over the game and like like the longer your scarf was the, the longer you can kind of fly and, gl and glide or whatever well eventually you can you can upgrade from this uh this uh uh red outfit to that this like all white outfit and once i got that i loved just like playing through the game again and then going into other people's games and stuff and just kind of like you know just being like this like sage like figure of like hey i have literally been to the mountaintop i've seen it all i've experienced it all i've ascended and now i'm adorning my white scarf my white garb and now let me help you on your journey and stuff whatever beautiful 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 um and yeah and so though like i said those are those are like said like some of like the key big ones um some some honorable mentions i want to mention that I like hey if you're just taking notes for like hey cool games you might want to check out um um inside in limbo once again spooky creepy season um <laughs> Fallout 4 for my wife because um, I, I got that game. She took control of the game and she ended up beating it on my PS4. I ended up getting it for her Xbox for Christmas or her birthday or whatever. She ended up playing through it again. So, yeah, because when, when, I, when I told her the other day I was putting together this list, she was like, oh, you should put on Fallout 4. And I was like, that was more game you play than me. But, uh... Uh, shout out to Watch Dogs 2 and Mafia 3, two dope games which came out around the same time. There was, it, it was just very great playing those games and having a black main character. And for one, with Marcus and Watch Dogs 2, just like his whole swag and his vibe and stuff. And then with Lincoln Clay and Mafia 3, just the way he handled the business, the way he talked. Because, of course, you know, the game is kind of takes place in Louisiana. I really dug that whole vibe and stuff, whatever. So, Mafia 3, very dope game. Um, a darling game of mine that a lot of people don't even know about called Hob. And one thing I loved about this game is it, it's a simple kind of like just like action adventure um, puzzle style game. But... Um, but one thing I loved about the game is how um, as you go through the different levels or whatever and you're unlocking stuff, the levels, um, let me see, hub gameplay, um, is that the levels and stuff are like shifting and morphing and things like that. And it, it was just like like nothing I had never, nothing I had never seen before. To be honest with you, um, why is what is this game doing? But um, but yeah, and 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 and, and it it has like like a really cool look and style to it too, you know. But um, but like I said, it, it was just just a really cool, just like action adventure game. And like I said, I just loved every time I just like had to like activate. A new area and stuff and just watching the world and the ground just morph and shape and stuff um it, it was just super dope um so yeah so shout out to hob unfortunately i think that studio doesn't even exist no more so we're not even getting more games from them um night in the woods was a a memorable game because that 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 and what remains of vita finch both hit me very hard um Firewatch was very dope. Um, Titanfall 2. If you're looking for a very dope single player first person shooter game, Titanfall 2 is one of the best ever. Um, especially, especially if you're a fan of Apex Legends, the DNA for Apex came from Titanfall. Um, and so, yeah. So Titanfall 2, super dope game. A game series I almost forgot until I was doing research for this podcast or whatever, but the Transformers War for Cybertron games. I don't know if anybody else out there remembers these games, but this was kind of like kind of like a shooter, uh kind of like a shooter style game. Uh, let me see, Transformers. Um and it, it was it was just super dope. That that's all I can really say about it is that 
it, it was just a super dope game where you're playing on either team of Decepticons or or, or Autobots, and especially like like the multiplayer mode, it was just so dope. Where you be in a match, you're running around in your robot form, running around shooting dudes, or whatever, and then just like transforming and just like zoom, speeding off and stuff, whatever. I love, it. especially like when you're when you're doing like having to like capture different points, or whatever. And it's like, hey, teammate, we need you over here. And like you're okay, pop, 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 shooting. And I just freaking transform into a freaking car and just like zoom over across the map. And then like 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 the transformations out coming out of the vehicle mode knocking out dudes or whatever it, it was such a freaking dope series um that i don't never hear nobody else really talk about <laughs> um and I, I think that's gonna really be it um you know personal favorite mad max um back in 2015 just something about that setting and just the vibe i just got really lost in that where i played like 60 plus hours of that game <laughs> But I just, just got really lost in that Mad Max game. Um, and Shadow of Mordor, that Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor in 2015, 2014. I just freaking, once again, that they had that uh, that uh, that free-flowing combat from the Batman Arkham games. And just running around in just that, that environment, just your, the different abilities. And I just love the making orcs' heads explode. Super dope, super dope. But anywho. I think that's it. I think I've talked about enough games, but um, hopefully, like I said, hopefully I didn't ramble too long. Um, oh, last thing, last thing, last, last thing. The current VR experience. Now, I got to experience VR in bits and pieces over the years. Now, I had like like the Samsung VR headset thing, whatever, many years back. Uh, which that was kind of neat and novel. Then I got to experience the PlayStation VR in a demo when they were doing like like the demo runs when um before the headset came out or whatever, and I got to play some space game or whatever. That was really dope. But a couple of years ago, when I was visiting my friends Bree and Aaron, shout out to y'all, much love to y'all. Um, and they had a Valve Index. Now. At the time, and even still now, the Valve Index is still one of the top of the line VR headsets and setups, or whatever. And so, I got a chance to, to fully experience not just, oh, I got a headset and I'm, I'm sitting down looking around or whatever. No, this is room scale where they have sensors set up in four corners and they block off. You know, hey, okay, this is your play area or whatever. And you can literally stand up and walk around the game or the environment and stuff, whatever. And so, three games I got to play. Um, Job Simulator, which is very simple, but very effective. Because you get a chance to like, to like walk around different environments, pick up and touch stuff. And the other thing that like really got me. And I can't remember if it was in Job Simulator or if it was in High Fly Phallus, but one of the two is that is that with the Valve Index, the controllers you have, they also do finger tracking. Because, you know, in most VR games or whatever, up, up until recently, you know, you just kind of just have just like a block hand or whatever, and you're just moving around, doing stuff, whatever. This one actually tracked individual fingers. So I never forget, I had the headset on, headset on. I looked down in my hand, and when I did this in real life, and I saw my in-game character's fingers literally doing that. I was like, yo, this is some next level stuff. But that was dope. And like I said, Half-Life Alex. <laughs> uh, kind of scared me for a bit because of how crazy and detailed that environment is. Because basically it's, it's like a first person shooter style game where you're literally walking through the streets and you're going to different areas and stuff, whatever. And, you know, I'm like walking around. I'm like literally picking up items and stuff, whatever, and throwing stuff and same thing drops in there. But it's like, I, you can actually like use your hand, pick up, hey, I am picking up this Game Boy in the game and just throwing stuff, whatever. When you pull out the gun, you got to freaking reload, change, change the game. And then of course, Beat Saber. 
we all play stuff like Guitar Hero and uh uh shoot what, what was that what was that uh, uh shoot what was that that uh mobile game what was it uh audio surfer i think i think it was called audio surfer yeah audio surfer um shout out to the homie gooch <laughs> um but um but we've played like rhythm games stuff like that order but but beat saber is a whole other beast because you know you have you know, your two controllers which basically in the game basically gives you lightsaber looking things and you're like having to, you know, attack the different music blocks as they're flying at, fly, flying at you or whatever. And I never forget, like, this is how I know I am I was immersed in the game. Because, you know, you start off, you know, you're just, you know, easy, whatever, you know, you're just slicing. And, you know, eventually, you know, of course, you, you might have to like maybe like move to the left or the right or whatever to, 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 to avoid some stuff coming at you or whatever um but i never forget when i was like in it or whatever and then one came in my head and of course yes it's a game it's not gonna hurt me it was just you know i'll get like an x or oh you know lost a point or whatever but when i'm doing stuff or whatever and then the freaking block came at my face i literally dropped down in real life and my friends was like was laughing because like because you know on on a separate screen or whatever they can see what you see in the game or whatever on like the monitor and stuff whatever and so we had a good laugh but yeah it was like do 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 oh <laughs> but yeah but I, I had to make sure i didn't forget to mention that or whatever but um but yeah so the current vr experience is wild so if, if if even if you don't buy one yourself, if you get a chance to, if you have a friend like I do or somebody that has a VR headset like the Valve Index and stuff like that or whatever, try out Beat Saber, Job Simulator, and Half-Life Alex. That's the trio that, hey, will show you how far VR and stuff has come um, over the years and stuff, whatever. So, because honestly... Hopefully, if, if things change, life get better, whatever, financially and everything, I think I might invest in the, the PlayStation VR 2 when that comes out next year or whatever. Maybe not immediately when it comes out, but eventually, because um, that's going to have a better headset. That's going to have finger tracking. Um, it's only going to have one cord, all that stuff, whatever. So it's like, okay, VR is getting better and stuff, whatever. So, um, so yeah, so we'll see where that goes, but... I hope that y'all enjoyed this extra long edition of the podcast episode and, uh, and you know, my, me talking about my journey of games, but, um, let me see, I think, let me see, I talked about everything else I want to talk about, um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get ready to, uh, wrap up the show. So as always, thank you so much for listening and or watching, um, Y'all know, as always, you can find me everywhere at That Needs to Talk. Um, make sure you subscribe to the podcast, to the audio version of the podcast on whatever podcast streaming service you of your choice, as well as make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel because your boy just finally crossed um, 200 YouTube subscribers. So, woo, yay me for hitting a small milestone and stuff like that. So, but, um, but yeah, like I said, I hope y'all had fun. Going down, going down this memory lane with me, seeing some of my, you know, my old games and and different stuff like that or whatever. Um, I shoot, I even still got my freaking um uh, my little carrying case I got for it for when I had Pokemon Emerald. Um, but uh, but yeah, I hope y'all enjoy this. Cause like I said, I I kind of had the the gaming bug, and so I was I was like, you know what, I want to talk about some games, and I want to talk about just like 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 the big games like really hit me and impacted me and i plan on in the future doing another version of this but talking about how gaming has and hasn't changed since i become it since i became a dad so yeah i look forward to that episode in the future um because that's definitely gonna cover a lot more recent stuff you know like mario odyssey and having the nintendo switch and um, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Spider-Man and Horizon and all these different things, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. But uh, so be on the lookout for it. Like I said, in the future, that'll be sometime down the road. 
But um, but yeah. Um, but your boy is about to wrap things up. Like I said, I got some manga to read, some some stuff I'm ready to dive back into. But as I always say, treat yourself to something nice. Read some manga and buy some manga. <laughs> Watch some anime. Play some video games and just live your best life. And with that, your boy is out. Um, Y'all have an awesome rest of your week. And let's head into a new month and new adventures. I love y'all so much. Y'all take care. Y'all take care. (laughs) Be easy and peace.